I lie in my levels all the time. And in this video, I'll show you how and why you should do it too. Let's get started. Huh? Who put this here? It sucks. <clears throat> Hold on. There we go. Before I go on to explain how I manipulate hitboxes and visuals, we first need to understand what hitboxes are. I have a mod that allows me to show the hitboxes of all of the objects. Here we can see different colored outlines. Blue is for solid objects that you can stand on. Hitting red in any way will kill you. And green is for interactable objects such as portals and orbs. The player also has a hitbox and if it collides with any other hitbox, they will interact accordingly. For example, if the player's hitbox collides with a red hitbox, it will make the player go boom. Now that out of the way, let's move on to the video. Over the couple of years now that I've been back and making levels, I've started optimizing everything about my levels. This also includes the layout. Usually when people make a layout, they use the 1x1 blocks to make the gameplay. I've decided to start using the biggest blocks possible to decrease the amount of objects in my levels. This helps lower end devices to play the level better. Not only did I start using bigger objects for the layout, but I took it a step further and started removing anything I know for certain you cannot interact with. If you take a look at my levels, you'll notice the hitboxes are far different from what the visuals show, and this is all on purpose. Let's take a look at my latest level, Dole Damos, since in this one you can see how I've honed this technique over the years. Here on the left you can see the layout, and on the right you can see the visuals. You can see how drastically different the visuals are from the layout. It's like a completely different level. Removing unnecessary pieces in layouts is a good way to optimize your level, but you have to be very careful not to remove needed objects, and you have to make sure that no secret ways emerge from removing those objects. I also remove the hitbox for spikes you can't hit, but keep the visuals there to keep the perceived difficulty of the level. If you're unsure what you can and can't hit, an easy way to start removing hitboxes is by deleting the hitboxes facing away from the player. From there on out, you can slowly build your courage to start deleting more and more objects. That's all I have to say about removing objects. Let's move on to something extremely subtle, but important parts for the enjoyability of the gameplay. So this is something you've probably never noticed about my levels, even if you've played all of them. Sometimes, a part is too hard compared to the rest of the level, and thus needs to be toned down. This scenario happens all the time, but most of the time it's as simple as moving an object a few pixels in some direction to make the jump easier. Sometimes though, it's just not feasible to move an object in any direction, and this happens quite a bit with my levels due to my building style. Basically I create tilesets or assets of sorts, and I use those to craft a part that has consistent looks throughout the part, and because of this, the visuals can't be changed without major changes, and in my opinion, it's just not worth it. So what I do instead is, I just simply move the hitbox slightly, but not the visual part. I've used this in format till in the very beginning. These spikes on the floor are actually nerfed because it just didn't feel right when they were the actual right hitboxes. Here's another example from Doledamos. The spike on the bottom structure is a few pixels inside the structure to give you a fairer jump. It's very minor, but it's there. You don't want to overdo this though, because it will just make your hitboxes inconsistent. I also know that not everyone can use this trick, but if your layout is completely invisible, you can always use this trick if needed. You just have to be careful not to alter the hitbox too much from the visuals, so it still feels right. Just a couple of pixels here and there, and you are good to go. Also, never buff a part by making the hitbox harder for one jump while keeping the visuals the exact same as the rest of the jumps. That is just super annoying. Please don't do that. Transitions from one part to another can be tricky to make, especially if those parts don't have much in common. 
it can just look off if the style changes abruptly from one to another. One thing I've used a lot through all my levels is adding a seeming dead end in the transition. I've done this various times in Fancy Me an Object, OOO, for Matilda and Dole Damos. In Fancy Me an Object, you jump into a floor full of spikes here, and then later on you come across a wall before tentacles take over. Then you go through bits of the next part very quickly. This is still one of my favorite transitions. In OOO, there are two times when you jump into spikes. One after the first part, and the second later on with a glitch effect with it. In For Matilda, you launch yourself into the lava underneath you, but a hand picks your icon just before you reach the lava and throws you into the next part. And finally, in Dole Damos, you have a wall of spikes before you drop down or up into the next part. This is also the only vertical move in the entire level, which makes it a bit more interesting. These dead ends are not exactly lying, like the hitbox manipulation I talked about earlier, but they do say that there is no way to go and that you're dead. But then the transition happens and boom, you are on a brand new part. I think it's actually kind of clever, since it lets the player know that the part is about to end and a new one is about to start. Not much else to say about this one, just make sure the transition looks cool, makes sense in some way, either to the theme of the level or the music, and most importantly, make sure there's enough time to react to the next part. There are two more things I want to talk about, but they don't really fit any of the other categories, so I'm shoving them both in the end here. In Dole Damos, I have two transitions that are kind of the opposite of dead ends. You have a clear way to go forward, but suddenly, a glitch happens and you go through all of the blocks while the level stops moving. Pieces are removed and they show a new part underneath. Both layouts you see are actually completely playable and sync to the music. This was completely unnecessary from my part, but I still wanted to do them. There's also a part in Dolly Damos where I use invisible gameplay portals, which is mostly frowned upon by the community. The reason why I did this is because Robert Gaming Code. <laughs> Basically, in dual mode, the icons have their own gravity, unless they're the same game mode. With just one single exception, a wave and cube. I had to work around this by placing invisible robot and cube portals when the cube jumps and switches gravity. This is more just fixing a bug rather than lying, but I thought I'd mention it as well. Anyway, that's going to be it for the video. Join Discord, check out merch, links in the description, and thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new and maybe, just maybe, got motivated enough to add these tricks to your repertoire. Subscribe if you enjoyed, new videos every time I upload a new video. I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.